Ashley. Welcome back to another installment of Lovely Layering with Ashley. Today I am going to dive in on how to get the perfect die cut each time. A lot of times I have ruined cards because my die was a little off to the left or to the right and it's just completely ruined my image that I've taken so much time to stamp or color and never again. I've learned some great tips and I want to share them with you today. The first card I'm going to, or the first tip I'm going to give you is using the wallpaper art stamp set. I love this stamp set. It is absolutely in my top favorite stamp sets of all time. And I usually take a lot of time to color in these images because they're so beautiful. Now to save time today, because we're talking about die cutting, I'm not going to go into uh, coloring these images, but I wanted to give you tips instead on how to get your die cutting perfect. So for this first tip, I have stamped my image and you can just pretend like I've taken a really long time to color this. So I'm going to be using this piece of masking paper and I'm going to use the coordinating die for this stamp and just cut it out anywhere really on this piece of masking paper. I'll set the positive die cut aside that I can use later as a mask, uh, but I'm going to use the negative here as a guide for where to place my die. Now for that, I just use the negative and make sure that I line up exactly where I want it until I can see only the flower and a really even section of white around it. This will obviously be easier to line up when it's colored, but once I've done that and match my die over the top, and you can actually feel the groove sort of get into place, then I can put that through my die cutting machine, take off this low tack tape that I've made sure to put on just to make sure that the die doesn't move around at all, and we get this absolutely perfect die cut. Again, this technique is really great to use for things like this when you have done a lot of coloring like this here or taking a lot of time to make sure that you have a really beautiful piece and you go to die cut it out and again your die is a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left this is just a guide to make sure that you get it perfect every time and you can always put this guide in the stamp pocket and keep it forever and it will help you die cut for a long time to come now my next tip uses the Snapdragon set. As you can see, it's got the leaves and the stems with it. I am also showing the lavender set here because it has the same type of feel where you get the um, leaves and the stalk with the actual flower, but the stamps are separate. So this is usually a problem because if your stamp is a little bit off to the left or to the right, it's not going to fit when you go to match up that coordinating die. So I'm going to show you a few ways that you can remedy that. Again, I'm going to use the Snapdragon set, but I wanted to just show you the lavender set as well so you got an idea of what I was talking about. I'm going to use this stock here because it has a curve. It's also that much harder. It's easy when you have a solid piece that is curved and you can keep that curvature, but when you're using something like a clear stamp that is really movable, it's easy to put it a little bit off or bend it a little too much and not realize that you're doing so. So I'm going to go through really quickly how I layer all these stamps. The colors that I use for the Snapdragon here are Pinkalicious, Rubelite, and Razzleberry. Again, just for a quick reference, from lightest to darkest, I use the first layer, the second, and then finally the third. I will show you in a minute one of my favorite parts of this layered stamp set, which is the green stalk that goes through those petals. I'm putting it together right now. I think that it just looks so wonderful. It looks perfect in there. I really love that they paid attention to that detail and made it look just really fun and realistic, like it's going right through the petals. And it almost just looks like it took you that much longer to create um, but that is just the genius of Altenew sometimes. Uh, they're able just to bring in all of that realism with all of their florals that I love. So for the greens, I am using Firefly, Grassfield, and Mountain Pine. Now I've gone ahead and stamped the top portion of my Snapdragon. So now before I stamp the stem, what I'm going to do is use the coordinating die to die cut this out. Now because these stamps match up really well and they're not very flexible or need to be bent in any which way, it's going to be really easy for me to line the top of the coordinating die up with this stamp. 
So I've gone ahead, put some tape on there so it doesn't move around again, and I put that through my die cutting machine. Now I have the actual stamped image and the negative of that cardstock that I've cut it out of. Now, if you don't use the cardstock once it's in your Misty, you'll get a lot of movement. There's no way besides using uh, repositionable tape, which I still find sometimes just pulls up a little bit and you don't get the exact spot. So there's no way to really make sure that it's in the exact spot that you need it to be. But if you use that negative piece, you can go ahead and put the stamped die cut image in there. And now you'll know exactly where to place your stem stamps and your leaf stamps. So it's really as simple as this, just putting it back in the negative cardstock that you've die cut it out of. But now you have a guide of where exactly the curve needs to be in this stamp. Again, I'm going to go ahead and ink this up pretty quickly, but I just wanted to make sure that you could see how I stamp it on there with the Misty. So I've lined it up. I just made sure everything was in place. I go ahead, ink that up, close my Misty door, and then I get this really perfect image, stamped image exactly where it needs to be inside that die cut there. I repeat the same process with the leaves, just making sure that I line that up inside the die cut there. And again, it's really easy to see because the stamps are clear. So that's a really great advantage that we get with using clear stamps. So I've gone ahead and stamped all of the pieces that go with the Snapdragon. And you can just see that, of course, because we've already previously die cut this, you get this really perfectly die cut full image. This next technique is one that Nicole Picadora is a rock star at, and it's one that you have to have a little bit of confidence to do. So don't feel pressured to do it, but it's probably one of the easiest to do once you get a hold of it. So I'm going to go ahead and use that coordinating die for the stamps that I'd like to use, and I'm just going to uh, die cut that out of a piece of cardstock first thing. So now I have the die cut piece with no stamps on it. Now, if you've ever watched a product video over on the Alta New channel, you'll know that Nicole is sort of infamous for stamping all of these layers on top of each other and making it look perfect. So I'm going to channel, channel my inner Nicole and try to do the same thing. I'm being a little fancy with this, uh, <laughs> Uh, layered stamping. I'm using two different shades. I'll do a pink on the bottom and have it just fade up into this yellow on the top. Um, this is an idea from an older card that I created, um, but I wanted to bring it back for this because I thought it was really fun. So again, I go ahead and just line that up over the die cut with this acrylic block. Now again, this is the quickest way because you don't have to do any die cutting and then matching it back up in the negative, putting it in the misty. This is sort of just the straight shot. So we're just stamping right on top of that pre die cut piece there. So this is the second layer. I'm just going to go ahead again and I know that I'm using two different uh, inks. Maybe that wasn't the greatest idea for this one, but I really like the way that it comes out in the end. And then I'm going to simply just line it up and over the top. And again, because the acrylic block is clear and the stamp itself is clear, it's really easy to see through. Again, you do have to have a little bit of confidence because of course it's a little scary just stamping right on top rather than using your Misty. But the Snapdragon is one of the more forgiving flowers for layering. If this was a flower set that, or a layered set that was extremely detailed, I might say it's just a better idea to use the Misty, but the acrylic block stamping is a really great technique to use, especially for a flower like this, like I said, that is a little bit more forgiving. So here comes the, or my favorite part of the stamping in this flower, and that is that center stalk through the petals there. Again, I'm just going to line it up and lining this center stock up um, scared me a little bit, honestly, when I went to do it. And then I realized it was so easy because the spaces that it allows for lining up um, once you've already stamped the petals is just so simple to line up. So this was really an easy one to do. I would actually suggest trying it first with this this stamp set specifically if it's something that you wanted to try to see if you excelled at um, because this was a really great one um, to use for it and it was really great practice. 
So again, just going ahead, lining up here inside that die cut. It's basically the same thing that we did with the die cut in the negative cardstock with the Misty, only this time I'm stamping with an acrylic block. And here is the finished image. It looks great die cut out because again, we pre die cut it. And again, I'm sort of recreating uh, this card that I created when this stamp set first came out and I just absolutely love it. It is so simple, but the dual tone or actually the three tones, the orange and yellow and pink and the flower really make it stand out. And having a good die cut there is extremely important so that the flower doesn't sort of just fade into the rest of the card base. I hope that you've enjoyed learning some of my favorite tips to ensure perfect die cutting. As always, links to all of the products used today are in the description. And if you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to ask me in the comments. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Alta New channel. Thank you. Bye.